Final Hour Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. We'll get to our best bets later in the hour. Jays Royals tonight look back on the weekend against the Dodgers. What happens with the Jays moving forward? Um, Richard Griffin coming up, Pierre Lebrun coming up. A couple of games in the, in the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. And as we've been saying all day, if you're rooting for a seven-game series, it, it basically has to be Dallas Vegas right now. It feels that way anyway. Right. Um, that said, you know, Tampa, they stayed alive, right? Like, I'll credit the Islanders. I'll credit Tampa. They stayed alive. They were down 3 nothing. They could have got swept. Doesn't it seem like the motivation to just get that one to say you didn't get swept and then you just get crushed the next one? Yeah, I could see that. I think we all – I expect Carolina and Florida to win game five. I think Florida ends it tonight. Um, Carolina will end it tomorrow. But, yeah, and I think you can take pride in that. You know, on both both of those teams. Like the Islanders had to go on a run to get in. They got in. Good for you. Tampa had an unbelievable window. Won two cups, three cup finals. Tons of character and pride. Good for you. But that's it. You know, Florida, Carolina, New York, likely the Bruins. <clears throat> like those have been the four best teams in the East all year. They're all in the driver's seat, and the Rangers are already through. Yeah, right. That Rangers, everybody called it. Everybody saw it. They're just outmatched. And yeah, I mean, I I love that Obi afterwards came out and said, "This is on me. I got to be better." Like he at least owned it. Like he he didn't run and say, you know, this and that. Like you just said. Like and it, yesterday he played his least amount of minutes. I think he played just under sixteen minutes. Mm-hmm. And Carberry couldn't find any matchups for him. Couldn't get him going. Couldn't anything. Called him out in the previous game. But Ovi just said, like, this falls on me. I need to be better, and I wasn't. And, you know, yeah, I, kind of seems like. But when it's yeah. up to Ovi to get, like, it's just, they're not, they weren't good enough. They, no. their, their playoffs was well, the just Rangers to get are in. So good. The Rangers are legitimate. Like, they're, it's the reason why you win the President's Trophy, and then you just continue to roll through. The next series will be interesting for them. Now, it'll be Carolina, correct? If, you know, yes. Carolina gets through. So that'll be yeah. a hell of a series. That'll be a great series. Big time. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a great series. I mean, that that's that's where it's going. On the other side, it's it's going to be Florida, I think, tonight. And then if they get through, I mean, that is going to be more of a motivation for the Bruins to end the Leafs tomorrow night, right? If you're yeah. the Bruins, you don't want to extend the series if Florida's sitting there waiting for you, right? And that will that will you know we'll cross the bridge when we get to it, but. The Rangers winning in a sweep, if Carolina wins it in five, if Florida wins in five, and the Bruins win in five, like that that rarely happens where the four best teams and the four top seeds just cruise. Yes. Like no one's There's putting up a fight. There's always an upset. There's always wow. an upset or at least a fight. And I, I yeah. guess at this point you're, you've got the Islanders, the Lightning, and the Leafs. They're all down 3-1. Who do you think's got the best chance at making it a fight? Could you could you see at least Tampa? Like, could you see Vasilevsky stealing one? And Kucherov? He has the history of doing that. Of course, Kucherov's I mean, going to win the heart. I mean, you could see it, but you're yeah, just Kucherov's going to win the heart this year. And 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 yeah. to me, you know, there's a guy who has been frustrated. He's gotten some points, but he hasn't been, you know, peak Kucherov. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I mean, that that Tampa, I think, could get one. I guess you'd I, go Tampa because of their history. Right, yeah. not even because of what's happening right now. Not not even taking into consideration the way Florida's playing, Boston, right. Carolina. They've all been playing really well. Tampa does have a history where they've earned it. Right, have some faith in them. Right, that they they might show some backbone. I, I don't know if you can say that about the other teams we're discussing here. Uh, here's Pierre LeBron, our TSN hockey insider, just talking about the East. Pierre and the Rangers are through. It kind of feels like Carolina and Florida and the Bruins are just going to cruise through. And what does that say about the top four teams in the East and basically everyone else? Well, it definitely says that uh, the West has has a lot more going on. <laughs> that in terms of teams that, if you listed your top ten teams before the playoffs to win the Cup, you'd have more teams out of the West in it for sure. I think than the East, and that's seems to be playing out as far as the disparity in the first round. But to what you guys were just talking about, I'm not ready to count out the Leafs yet. I mean, obviously, I'm going to be Captain Obvious here, but uh, the where Austin Matthews is tomorrow night, we'll, we'll have a bit, pretty big barometer on if the Leafs can come back. But I'm not ready to 
you know, the Bruins were talking about this after the game the other night. You were there, Brian. I mean, they, they were taking questions about being up 3-1 in Florida last year, and, and that's dancing in their heads a little. So if you're going to ask me which series in the East I think it still has some juice, I do think it's Toronto-Boston as long as, you know, 34 is, is a part of the script there. Pierre, how kind of ugly does the scenario get with, like, the bitching on the bench and mm-hmm. another playoff series, like, how greasy does it get if they don't get it done tomorrow? I don't think anyone can hide from what we're seeing with their own eyes the other night. And and, and it's okay because it means that they care at least. I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, that that's important. And, and, and I've always thought that they did, just to be clear. But that's a demonstration of how frustrated I think um, they are right now. And I used this line on SportsCenter Saturday night, oh, dog. But it felt like eight years boiling over in that moment on the bench. But frustrated like with what? Like with their own play well, or results or frustrated well, with they, what? I mean, I think in the moment it's frust- frustrated that they could that they can't produce more offense against Boston for sure. That's the most obvious answer for me. But I think in general my point is that something bursts there where when you keep running out the same thing eight years in a row and hope it's a different outcome. And and it's not because they don't want to win and they're not trying and they're not good players. But it's the same script over and over again. And again, let's not, this series isn't over. So next time I'm on, we may have a whole different conversation. But in the moment, you want to talk about Saturday night, I mean, those guys are feeling it. Like, why is this happening to us every spring? I mean, six home playoff losses in a row is unbelievable to me. Insane. Like, like, like you can't pretend to be among the top cup contenders in the league and lose six home games in a row in the playoffs. I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree. Pierre, what do you make of the whole Matthews situation? We were talking about it, and we're not going to speculate. We wouldn't ask you if even if you knew, but it's more about, you know, there's a sickness slash injury or whatever, and obviously the Leafs are under a cone of silence, but it's, you know, he doesn't look right, and that's the one thing. Yeah. He doesn't look whether, you know, if physically healthy from a, a standpoint of the flu or physically healthy from, you know, an injury or a tweak, but Matthews does not look right. Uh, you know, how do you report that? How do you uh, look at that, even if you're the Leafs? Because isn't there something yeah. from the league where you've got to at least, you know, release something? You know, and right now it's just been, hey, he's sick, and it's been lingering, yeah. and it gets worse when he plays. Well, First of all, before I get to Matthews, uh, just as a general comment, I mean, I, I do think that at some point you got to think there's going to be some kind of conversation with someone at the league about, you know, being in bed now with legalized gambling and still being the league that that is the most shrouded in mystery with injuries and game time situations, uh, and which has a pretty big barometer on things. So I think you guys can fill in the blanks there, but but that is. It's something I thought about the other day. Both the league and the NHLPA, um, you know, are, are 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 aligned here with with this. And yet, um, you know, like the NFL has way more information on injuries, as you guys know. Mm-hmm. So that's a topic for another day, and it's something we have brought up with the league over the years, by the way. But um, it, the league has never thought that this was an issue that gets brought up to them. But it's something I'd like to follow up on at some point because. Um, you know, it's really happening in almost every series. But, um, you know, as far as Matthews goes, I mean, obviously we were poking around on it Saturday night and making calls. It's, it's, how do I put this without, (laughs) um, obviously you're getting information, but one of the things at this time of year is you're getting information and then you have to ask yourself, do I completely trust it or not? Um, and I do in this case. Uh, in the sense that there's clearly, you know, he's not right. And he was so dynamic in game two. I and mean, that was one of the best playoff games. I think we've, we've seen him play in game two. And then he just has been off ever since. And, you know, missing some practices being pulled out of game four, he's clearly not right. But obviously once the playoffs are over, you know, they will be in a position to shed more light on it. And, and, you know, listen, it's, I live in a house with, Two daughters who are diehard Leaf fans. What do you think they're asking me every two minutes? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's no different than when Nylander was out. It's it's a topic of interest, but no other sport like it for uh, for for teams uh, trying to keep those things shrouded in secrecy. To use your words, noodles. 
Yeah. Yet again, as I said, they started the series by saying no medical updates, and now they're going above and beyond with a medical update on Matthews. What do you mean? They're just they're they're over describing. Well, like, just well, well the criticism, you know, I, I don't mind it. I don't think Steve Keogh will be. I mean, I think you'll understand why I'm bringing this up publicly. Steve Keogh is in, in the head of PR for the lease, and and hey, you were sitting beside me Saturday night, so you know where I'm going. But when the update came out at the start of third, that Austin Matthews was out. One of the things I pointed out, and I get it, but why didn't the Leafs say out with illness instead of just out? I mean, why in this market where there's already people running rampant with you know with crazy things at all times, and I'm reminded of that crazy time like Saturday night. Pierre, who cares anyway? Yeah. Like it just doesn't. It's it's just. Well, you think the Boston I mean, I, Bruins like they're going to say we don't know who's starting? Do you think the Bruins are going? Oh man. Like I really, right. like, nobody cares. That's the thing. That's why it sounds so stupid. Is no one cares? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So I, I, I at the very least, at the start, when, when the least tweeted out that uh, Austin was out, they should have said with illness because that's what they said post game anyway. Right. Why not say it in the moment? That that's just a little thing that bugs me. Yeah, I mean, and ultimately, you know, if he's what matters is is he playing or not, and if he's not going to play, then it's obviously a, a very different situation and you know it also is unique to the nhl and stanley cup playoffs is you know there's this aura around players playing through everything you know yes. and, and there's probably some sensitivity there also that nylander already missed three games we don't know all the details on that now mm-hmm. matthews leaves in the third period after they're down three nothing getting booed off the ice will he play game five you know all this is hanging over them and yet at the end of the day they're, they're down three one and their backs up are up against the wall um, yeah, not the case with Vancouver and Edmonton, where they're both up three one, and it appears it appears as if they're on a crash course to meet each other in the second round. Oof. you know, which would be a, an incredible series. Edmonton, you know, I think that was a really important and significant way of winning last night, where they just pushed everything to the outside. It was really boring. They score on the power play and they win one nothing, and now they're in the driver's seat. Where Vancouver, it was the polar opposite. They're down 3-1. They scored two goals late, Besser a hat-trick, and then Lindholm, a guy who they acquired and then reportedly tried to flip two weeks Hated later. Hated him a week later. Yeah, he <laughs> scores the, the OT winner, and everything's all good in Vancouver. What do you make of it? Yeah, he, he, he may or may not have all, almost been a Boston broom before March 8th, but it's, mm-hmm. uh, everyone involved uh, is trying to distance themselves from, from all that talk. Um, you know... Let's start with the Oilers. I'm heading back to Edmonton tomorrow, and and that was so impressive to me last night. In part because it was not their A game at all, but they found a way to grind out a greasy road win with what they had. And you know, it's funny. Right before the playoffs started, uh, the first day I got there at Edmonton, Matthias Ekholm was doing a big media scrum, and he and he was asked about all the years he's played playoff games in Nashville. Obviously, went to a Cup final, and he was asked about you know how do you how do you know when you're on a team that's going to figure out a long run? And he said, one of the key things for him is you got to learn to win ugly some nights during a playoff run where you just don't have it as a team. It's not going the right way, but you just gut it out. And I know it sounds simple to say, but when you hear him say it out loud, the way he was saying it, that's what happened last night. I mean, that's their lowest shot total in years. Um, you know, they just couldn't get a lot going offensively, which is remarkable for them. Uh, the Kings played a really good, strong five-on-five game, uh, emptied the kitchen sink on them. But, um, you know, the Oilers found a way. And obviously Stuart Skinner was very good. But the point being is that when you graduate and mature as a contender and become a team that you go, oh, this, this team, the light might have gone on, you get wins like last night. That was really impressive by Edmonton. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look at what else we have here in the West. You got Dallas and Vegas tonight. And, you know, Vegas could be up 3 nothing. They get a bounce in overtime. They're up 3 nothing yeah. right now. And yet I think Dallas felt pretty good about their game the other night and probably should. Um, do you have a vibe one way or the other in terms of where this that, is that going tonight? Like seven, that smells like the last series that we'll still have going in the first round when everyone yeah. else is home. That's but Dallas got to win tonight, I think, for that to happen, Pierre. They, they do, but I would also say, like you were saying, Vegas could be up 3 nothing, and obviously they could. But I also thought they were, Vegas was fortunate in Game 1. If you look at the underlying numbers in Game 1, I mean, Dallas was all over them, but just 
found a way to lose, if that makes any sense. And and so, you know, I think 2-1 is probably where it should be, I guess. Um, I just think it's going to go back and forth. And, um, you know, it, it's it's cr- what's crazy about that series is that that's a Western Conference final happening in the first round. <laughs> um, you know, one of those teams is going home and you're going to be, how, you know, how did first place Dallas lose in the first round? How did the Stanley Cup champions get knocked out in the first round? Well, it's happening either way. It just depends on which one here over the next few days. And, and you know, it, it's funny because I, I've had a, you know, I wrote a piece a couple of weeks ago doing a survey of, of NHL governors about wanting to go back to the old playoff format, uh, you know, one versus eight and two versus seven and so on in each conference. And I, I kind of do it almost every year. This was the first year that I got this resounding a yes in terms of wanting to go back to the old format. Um you know, and uh, it only, it's a conversation that only matters with one person, as you know. He, he's the one that has to be interested in this conversation. But Why does he have all the cards, though? He can just say, no, I don't like that. Does he not know? And the league is well run. There's a lot of positives, Pierre. But there's some things you got to do. Like, I always you think about the stu- oh, no. I, I I'll yeah. do something different, Pierre. Like yeah. the stupid blue jerseys at home, it drives me nuts, and it's just a little thing. But fans want to see the colors of the other teams. Every team that comes in wears a white jersey. Do they understand how stupid that is? Like it's really stupid. But they're just like, that's what we do. I get it. He's the boss, and he holds the, you know, the last decision. But there's some things like just look into it and sniff it out instead of saying, "No, I'm Gary. I do what I want." It's just it's just a dumb way to look at it. Yeah, well, listen, I, I do think there's, you know, again, because there's so many governors now that suddenly want to talk about this, you know, the CBA is up in two years. So you guys are going to ask me a lot of things over the next couple of years that are bugging you. And I'm going to unfortunately have a very similar answer, which is when CBAs are about to come up, they become an answer to a lot of things. Uh, for example, the LTIR issue. Uh, I can tell you right now that that the league has asked the executive committee of GMs to go back and canvas all 32 GMs and once and for all get get an answer on yay or nay, do you want us to look into fixing that loophole? And if the answer is yes, and I suspect the answer will be yes, by the way, um, guess what the league's going to say? Okay, well, the CBA is up in two years. We'll bring it up with the PA. So playoff format, LTIR, bring me three other ones in the next <laughs> in the next year that you guys want to bring up. It's all going to come back to the next round of of labor negotiations, I guarantee you. Pierre, we were talking about if you had to describe the first round with one word, what was, uh, there was disappointing and dull. I dull. I mean, where where are you at with it? I mean, you, I know you were in the building in Edmonton, and you know you've witnessed the West. But I mean, there uh, from just kind of either predictability or just mm-hmm. not a series that looks like they're going to head seven. Where are you at with it? Yeah, um, taking aside the crazy ending in Nashville last night, which was unreal, I would right. say the one word I would use overall for all eight series is underwhelming. Um, we're used to fireworks in the first round and where every night is a gong show. Um, and not that I wish this, but we haven't even had NHL player safety involved yet. I mean, usually there's all these things going on. And, and by the way, so that's good. We don't want anyone to get hurt. But I'm just saying it, there's not been as, as much chaos as we're used to. But first round isn't over. That's true. It's not, Pierre. You're your glass half full guy. I like it. Great comment to end it, Pierre. Yeah, I Great like it. We'll comment. leave it there. Let's hope that's the case. Let's see who can Wait, push was it. That the re- was that the reverse from O-Dog on Great Question? Did he just reverse me there? I'm yeah, to kind of felt like out. It's, I didn't say great question. I said great comment. It really got everyone fired up when you said it's not over the first round. It gave us all hope. It was a shot of adrenaline, Pierre. There you go. Thank you, Pierre. Good luck with uh, Ezekiel Elliott back in Dallas as well. I told you fun. Saturday that was Come happening. On. I know. We're listening. I know. He's coming back. What a, what, I love it. Bring him back. Apparently he's be... a monster right now. There's some vids out there circulating of yeah, wow. his wow. off-season repertoire I don't think is intense. Is doesn't fair, he have tat- Doesn't he have food tattooed on his stomach or something like that? Doesn't he have to word? I, I, I don't. <laughs> I swear know. to God. Yeah. I swear to God. I'm not being. There's a, there's a spoof. There's a spoof video of an absolute monster, and he's doing these cone drills, and he starts spooning in the cereal before he wow. does it, and then he just falls down. 
It's, so, it's outrageous. So, so here's what I'll say. The Cowboys have had such a disaster of an offseason that at this point I'm actually fully invested. You know, every, every team in the league says, well, you don't, you don't spend on running backs anymore. Running backs are devalued. You should not spend on running backs. I love the fact that the Cowboys are doing this for the NFL. They've decided not to have a running back this year. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. But it's all on Dak, right? It's on Dak and Mike McCarthy. It's almost like they're waiting for it to fall apart. And then they'll change directions. I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised. All right, Pierre. Uh, Thank you for this. All right, guys. See you later. Pierre LeBron, our TSN Hockey Insider. It sounds like Jason Kelsey's on his way to ESPN as well. which that would be a win. Oh, yeah. I mean, you knew that was coming if you wanted to get into media. I, I thought he might kind of avoid conventional media, just keep doing his podcast. And yet, you know, I think it's a smart play. Like he's the, the iron is hot right now for the Kelsey brothers, for Jason Kelsey. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of turnover in kind of football media. Like today, Phil Sims and Boomer Sison announced that they're not going back to CBS. Yeah. It's funny how it's like a bunch of people over the last bunch of years, it's like, Ah, we got no money. We got to let you go. And then Jason Kelsey becomes available. Probably signed an absolute monster. <laughs> monster. It's it's all, oh, you found money for that. Interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, there was money for that. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, he wouldn't have been going there for free. Two. He would have said, "Look, man, I just I was supposed to go to family time. If you want to transition me into that, you're going to stuff my jeans, and I'm not doing it if you're not." Yeah. Which is yeah, the appropriate exactly. way to go about it. I agree, and I guarantee you, it wasn't only ESPN bidding. For his services, I mean, yeah. you, you would have had everyone. Everyone would have wanted a chunk of that. Yeah, because yeah. you can't miss right now with, with a Kelsey. Yes, and, and, and he's the more sec- interesting one. But the second part of it is, he can f- like naturally feed the brother in when it's his turn too. Like direct traffic for him, said, "You just join me. Don't go over there. Or whatever." Yeah. That's yeah, true, exactly. too. If, Jay, if Travis wants to get Travis into it, Travis is not like he's not going to play forever. He's not young, so. Mm-hmm. They've got to be thinking this guy's going to be doing this, what, two, package three years? Deal. Package deal. You bring yeah. the Kelsey brothers in. They keep doing the podcast. and Oh, monster stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. that could go a long way, certainly Agreed. for ESPN. He's an interesting guy. I mean, I, I think everyone kind of likes – everyone likes Jason Kelsey. He's a fun guy, interesting guy. He's a well, smart guy. Did, did we talk about him losing his ring in the chili? We have not know. brought that up, but you're right. It was some reality show he was doing, right? Yeah, he was talking about how, and then he lost the ring in it, and they went through the dumpsters and stuff looking for it and all of that. Like, he, he actually brought that up, I think, on his pod and yeah, said, like, I lost my ring it's gone. making chili. And it was so like. So he never got it back? No, it's gone. No. It was gone. He was, he was in, like, a, a massive, like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was like a. It's not a like convention, a but a charity. Yeah, yeah it was charity. like a pool of chili searching for something, and his his ring fell off, and it's just gone. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, it's the ring is somewhere in a dumpster in like Ohio." Nah, I would have, I would have cleared out the, I would have called but security. They, what are you do, the, I, I, no, I, I would have said, did. "I will spoon the whole pool out with a, a ladle." I, I think and, that's and before I sure get my ring. Tried. I, I sure think they they, he said there was like twenty people. Like going through the chili, like the because it was in some like giant vat, and then they think it got tossed into a dumpster out back, and mm-hmm. like, like they went through it, and it was just gone. Like now, or someone grabbed. It. I was no, just it kidding. Was oh no, I can't I find it. I can't find it. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, it's in his pocket. My precious, some <laughs> the golems walking out of there with Kelsey's exactly. ring. Exactly. I wouldn't I be know. shocked at all if that happened. No, I don't yeah. know, man. I was really trying. Oh, okay, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah the ring's gone. Ring's gone, but uh, Kelsey's wow. on his way to ESPN. So that means you could have Jason Kelsey there. You could have Tom Brady making his debut for Fox. Right? Hey, you That's know what? Kinda... We're connected to ESPN. Once a week with Jason Kelsey is going to be a lot of fun. You'd I think our show is big enough that somebody would hook that up. We'll see what we can do. Doogie, yeah. I'm sure, is on the case. Yeah. Um, best bets brought to you by FanDuel still to come. Jays, Royals tonight. What happened over the weekend? What happened starting tonight? Richard Griffin will join us on that and more. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, today's best bets are powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble the same game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. A glutton for punishment. I'm going to go back to the well here. Vladdy Guerrero to record a hit tonight. Blue Jays Isn't it win. sad that you're talking? I know. Like that? Yeah, I know. It's an incredibly negative view. I understand that. But that's where the Jays are at. In Kansas City, 
They're an up and coming team, but I, they're they're very beatable. Jays had a big win yesterday. Vladdy hit tonight. Jays win over four and a half Blue Jay total runs. You got a guy on the mound tonight for Kansas City that doesn't really have any history. Twenty seven year old minor league journeyman. And if you can't get after this guy when you have to get after this guy, that is concerning. So I'm going to reach for positivity tonight. Those are your best bets powered by FanDuel. The first inning means as much as the ninth when you bet baseball in the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Please play responsibly. 19 plus, physically located in Ontario. Otani comes and goes. See you later. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, show. Hey, good seeing you, man. He put a show on. He though. sure did. Mookie Betts <laughs> put on a show. Freddie Freeman, yeah. Max Muncie, who didn't put on a show. I mean, Friday night it was batting practice for the Dodgers. Saturday wasn't much different. And then yesterday, credit to the Jays. They showed up. They got some big hits. Gosman got them out of jams. Got Gosman pitched well. Yeah. You know, Mazik comes in, closes the door. Romano. There was a weird scene on Saturday, too. Romano was going in just to basically stretch out, and they did the whole reveal. Oh, my reveal God. That's <laughs> weird, dude. Yeah. And they were they were losing badly at that point it's just it's like who decided yeah, it's to like hit playing that? the wild thing song in major league when you're down six one it's like yeah. no can't do it you're not allowed to do that um here's our good buddy richard griffin griff's the pitch.com griff uh what do you think went down there with romano getting the the full entrance as if they were winning game seven of the world <laughs> series instead they were getting yeah. dusted by the dodgers I do believe that they should think about individual moments rather than just continuing on with what they always do. And I agree with you. I mean, like there are moments where uh, you don't necessarily need that happening, and it's a kind of embarrassing to see that happening. And he looks up, and 19 pitches in, they're taking him out. You know, I mean, the game wasn't even on the line. So uh, good for them. But I remember when I was writing at the Star, I would uh, – at the end of the Leaf season, I would always go, uh, while you weren't paying attention, here's what happened with the Jays. And I think so far they're lucky that nobody's paying attention to these guys. <laughs> yeah. But, well, Chris, uh, yeah, it, it reminded me, the first two games of Dodger Series, plus coming into it out of Kansas City, reminded me of last September when they lost four straight to the Rangers, and they looked like they shouldn't even be on the same field. Mm-hmm. And then they won nine of fifteen to qualify for the postseason. So that's the way you got to look at it if you're a Jays fan right now. Griff, how do you explain this whole thing? I mean, obviously Hayes mentioned earlier in the show it's early in the season. There could be some kind of miraculous turnaround, but to open up your new shiny toy and the money invested in the ballpark and to kind of wheel out that roster, and obviously you couldn't predict that. Maybe you could, Griff, the way they're performing, but it just. The, the business kind of sports synergy, synergy doesn't work with that roster right now. Like, how did you wheel that lineup out? Yeah, they, they had basically what they've got now is they've got the deepest bench in baseball. Unfortunately, three of them are starters. And, uh, you know, they, they've got left field, uh, second base, and third base. And they're pretty much running out bench guys and mixing and matching and doing their best. Um, so, like, I think it was very telling when GM Ross Atkins on the home opener was asked about how he thinks the new stadium with all the renovations, $360 million in renovations on the stadium, how it would play, whether it would help his team or not. And he said, I, I'm not sure how the stadium's going to play, but the clubhouse is great. It's got all the amenities. They got a float pool with dead sea salt water and stuff. And I'm going, holy crap. You know? Like, what about the team? What about, yeah. and, and they seem to, at least for this off season, be so focused on the stadium that they really didn't look at who's going to be playing in it. Yeah, which is uh, – I don't know if that's business one-on-one necessarily. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's but, necessary. And they're charging they're, a, a fortune yeah. down there too, Griff. Oh, yeah. But they're also so hung up on run prevention, which is the new catchphrase for, for the Blue Jays, and they improved their defense. And when they had Matt Chapman there, it was run prevention and Kevin Kiermeyer, and they ran him back through. Now they've got him out there. Varsho is – starting to hit the ball like they wanted him to, but it still looks like a pretty bad deal with, with the Diamondbacks. But run prevention with their pitching staff and, and 
they're not going to win games like that. They've only scored six or more runs three times this season. Mm. And they're 2-1 and one in those games. They're, they've got a great record. They're 8-0 and oh when they score exactly five runs. But you've got to be scoring more than that. You've got to, be, you've got to compete in games where your pitchers aren't leading the way, your starting pitchers aren't leading the way, and they're not doing that. I mean, I see, I don't know about you guys, whether you see the same comparison, but to me, just the fan reaction, Vlad and Bo are Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. You know, the, Vlad's got the tremendous skill set that nobody, no normal person could have, same as Austin Matthews. And, and Bo is the guy that you think you could play like, just like Mitch Marner. And then George Springer comes in as John Tavares. Mm-hmm. And that's not a good sign. It's a first round and out for both for both teams. <laughs> yeah, it's they pair they, they mirror each other in many ways. Bo what like Bo is shocking, Griff. It just seemed like this guy was an automatic stud. He would have ups and downs, but I mean him and Vladdy, that's nonsense, isn't it? What they're doing? Yeah, and Bo is out of the lineup today, which is good. They've got IKF and shortstop. Bo needed a day off, you know. I, I, on the beginning of this homestand, his dad was in town, and and I remember in during the COVID year when when Dante Bichette was uh, was a coach, and Bo would go consult him all the time, and he was the guy. And then there was a rule that during the uh, during COVID where you couldn't consult any of the coaches, and the coaches couldn't consult the players. So Dante just quit because he was living with Bo, and and that didn't make any sense. And now the the Jays have so many hitting coaches. They got four guys in the dugout, and you see Guillermo Martinez. He's not even turning around looking as Bo is talking to Matt Haig or or one of the other coaches. And the offensive coordinator did his thing. Don Mattingly did his thing before the game. So, like, he's not talking to anybody right there. And I, I think that Bo is a confused young man at the plate. Um, and, you know, it's a long season. You guys talked about the cliche that they're lucky that they play 162 games and it's only April the 29th right now. But he better straighten it out. Otherwise, this team is going to stay as a low-scoring team, struggling to win get close games. How about Alejandro Kirk? And I know there's oh. been an injury, and he had a, a home run and was three for three. But I mean, you know, this guy needs to kind of get his act together going too. Because I mean, all we talk about is Moreno on here, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and you know, rightfully so, he's he's played so well. But I, uh, where are you at with Kirk? Well, I heard you guys sort of down on uh, down on the boy last uh, at the end of last week, a few days in a row. But I've done some interesting research here, and Kirk, you know, he was with Jansen out. He was playing almost every day, and Brian Servan only pit played three or four games during that stretch. And uh, here's a number for you: when he played in his third or fourth day in a row, not game, in his third or fourth day in a row, he was one for twenty-one before Jansen came back. So he's one for twenty-one when his workload equaled him as a load. And uh, and since then, he's hitting 389 with an OPS over 1,000 since Jansen is back, and he's played seven games in that stretch without having to play back-to-back. So maybe maybe that's all he needed was to, to get a load off his feet mm. every other day. And and it seems to be working out, but they do need catching to uh, to provide a lot of the offense. And Jansen came back hitting the ball hard, and now if uh, if Kirk can straighten himself out, then behind the plate at least they'll be okay. Yeah, with Richard Griffin, I mean, Jansen, it always comes down to health with him. He's just had so many health issues throughout his career. Um, I know you're a big fan. I'm a fan of the way he operates. I know they are in the clubhouse. And, you know, those, those statistics point to the idea that they're going to need both these guys. Like you said, Jansen's got to stay healthy and Kirk can't play every day, which is the nature of the position. I mean, asking a guy to play every day behind the play is incredibly difficult to do. But yeah, when you, when you weigh 280 pounds also. Yeah, that's not exactly. I mean, yeah. he's, he's really putting himself in a, in a tough, tough spot, but you know, run prevention, run prevention, run pre- prevention. Fans, it's constantly the conversation is run 
production, and you just look at their counterparts in the American League East, they're they're miles behind, obviously the Yankees and the Orioles, but they're, they're chasing Tampa down in terms of run production, Griff. And it, yeah, it's okay. you know it's a serious issue, and that's the carryover from last year. That that's you talk about selling tickets and sizzle. If you can't hit home runs and create offense, <laughs> it's difficult yeah, to sell run prevention. We've t- we've talked about this division, I think, on previous sh- uh, shows, previous appearances, and, I, and I'm not a big fan of the Tampa Bay Rays being able to sustain uh, competitiveness in this division. Like we've talked about, was the strongest. The AL East was the strongest in baseball, plus 80 games last year, 80 games above 500 in, in outside their division. Um, but the Rays, uh, I think, are going to struggle this year. They already are. They're, they're three games under 500 heading in. Um, the, the Orioles, it's funny how their offense and their, their depth has increased so much, and they've become an exciting team. They're the sort of team that – could fill Rogers Center every night if they're, if that was the home team. But their bullpen used to be their strength, and now they can't get anybody out out of the bullpen. And I know Bautista uh, was hurt, had surgery. But, uh, you know, you, there's no such thing as a perfect team, and we know that because we see the Jays all the time. <laughs> Yes, that, that is Guys, true. we're just insane. I had to laugh to myself. We're in a bad place in Toronto sports right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, rough, man. It's yeah. it's a rough scene, Griff. And, and, it is. You know, it, it, the Jays, they've – yeah, it's tough to sell. It, it, that's, I guess, it the, is. probably the best way to put it. Is if Not long running, ago we are talking about the Raps winning a world championship, mm-hmm. the Jays World Series favorites heading into the season, right. the Leafs with a cup contender looking to get truck in the playoffs, and now where we're at a short time well, later TFC is somewhat won. depressing. Yeah, TFC, TFC won, MLS won. Cup. There you, accused, <laughs> you accused Pierre Lebrun of being a glass half full guy. Well, I'll go glass half full on you. They're one game under 500 with all this crap going on that we're talking about, especially Bo and Vlad. Yep. Um, and the bullpen, they had two guys hurt. Romano's back, and, and they found out all about Jimmy Garcia and how good he is. Chad Green's still out when he comes back. Their bullpen will be one of the best in the AL East. And, uh, you know, the game that Gosman pitched against the Dodgers was outstanding. That was, he was hitting the inside corner, outside corner. His, uh, his splitter was working very well. So if he's back, Barrios, there, Kikuchi keeps amazing me because his velocity keeps going up, and he's added that curveball that he's getting people out with. So, like, as a glass half full guy, there's a long way to go. It's the end of the first month of the season. And they got to hope because they've got a lot of expensive inventory to sell in that ballpark. And uh, if they're playing uh, the, the, the Kansas – well, they're just playing Kansas City now. But if they're playing the California Angels or the Anaheim Angels or the L.A. Angels, whoever they are, in August midweek, that's going to be – you can fire a cannon through there and not hit anybody. Yeah. That I didn't well peg you as a glass half full guy, Griff. I just didn't think it was in <laughs> you, man. It. Mr. Optimism, Richard. <laughs> yeah, it, very. It, it, it's it's got to be scotch. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that. It very well could be. Listen, that Springer catch yesterday, you could sell that, right? That that you Give us some of those highlight moments. and that, That's a Johnny Tavares moment. That's Springer right. Springer making that play. <laughs> that's exactly what that was. JT against, you know, in game two against the Bruins. That's what Springer yeah. supplied last Last night coming um, up big yeah no you're right all right glass half full i like it griff uh we always appreciate you doing this for us we'll do it again soon me and lebron yep there you go richard griffin griff's the pitch.com just a couple of couple of optimistic glass half full kind of guys uh, the, the one comment that it. does make you kind of think about it in a positive uh note is all the negative stuff that was brought up in that simple conversation and they're only one game under 500 yeah, exactly so that that should kind of that is something that I could I could buy into. Yep. Well, As, uh, yeah, you're right. right. You just need your you need your players to play better. That's really what it is. Like Bo and Vladdy haven't. And now Bo's not playing tonight, but Vladdy they haven't played to their capabilities, mm-hmm. and a lot of guys on that roster haven't. So that's right. See and they what will to an extent. Will it be career years? That seems unlikely. Right? right, but can they get back to where they're supposed to be for 120 games? Yeah, that's possible for sure. They got to get going, but that's certainly possible. 
Um, yeah, I mean, listen, if, if you're a Toronto sports fan, what else do you have right now, right? There's all this recourse in the fan base. Everyone buzzing about the Leafs like, you know, you feel stupid that you believed. Well, you now, why did I buy into this? Right. What else? You get two options, basically. You either don't believe and you hate the team you love or you psychologically get to a point where you say, yeah, it could happen. How like, many friends do you have, Hayes, that as soon as, like, if this ends tomorrow night, I get a message, I'm done with this team. Yeah, oh, that's, what they, that's, that's what they—that's what they write. I'm done. With, I'm done with this team. Mm-hmm. September fifteenth. I, I love this team, and we're going to win the cup this year. Every time, like clockwork, goes through a cycle. The guy at Loblaws today. I I love him. <laughs> I I I. He knows me, and I know him. I say hello, and I was getting a pizza from him, and. And he goes, what do you think? And I said, I don't know. And he goes, I think they're coming back. And I said, oh, okay, you know. And he goes, uh, I'm, and I'm a betting man. And I go, oh, really? And he goes, but I'm not going to put money on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go, well, careful. what does that mean? <laughs> That's right. just literally throwing out a statement. I think they're going to come back. Would but he goes, on it? absolutely not. And he goes, I'm a betting man. I'm like, okay, you got to put some. No, I'm not betting on that though. Like I was like, okay, it was it was funny because I I got a lot of that today. I rolled yep. through the the one oh, place. I, I'm getting the same thing, man. I, yeah. I was out all weekend, and everywhere you go, people are. You know, different conversations. Naturally, that's the beauty of the playoffs. That's why you want to see it extended naturally in the city that you happen to live in, because it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it drives conversation. And everyone's talking about it. Everyone's got a view. Everyone's got a take. Um, and and that's where they are. And I, yeah, I think I think the the play that really it doesn't matter if you you know if you say I think the Leafs are going to come back and they win and they don't it doesn't matter, but if they do. That's probably worth it, right? Because you look like a genius or you look like a believer because that's the outlier. Anyone that truly believes they're coming back, you are in a deep minority, deep minority. Like there might be a percentage of fans that believe it, but it's a very, very small percentage. Um, all right, we'll come back and tee up the two games in the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. Could Tampa go home? Uh, how big is this one for Dallas? Jays again in action Tonight as well down at the Rogers Center. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 now up on TSN 2. All right, so two games in the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. Tampa looking to survive. Dallas looking to tie it up. You got the Jays in action tonight. You got NBA action tonight. And it's, you know, survival scenario in the NBA as well. The Lakers are back in Denver. One of the Jokic brothers so will be in the building there. tonight. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a five hunch. Yeah. Pick two winners, Hayes, of those two hockey games. You've got to get them both right. I'm going to go Tampa, Dallas. Ooh. Ooh the I'm underdogs, on... technically, yeah. right? What about okay. for 750? All right. I, I'll, I'll take uh, Florida and Vegas. Sure. Oh, you're taking both. Well, I'll but, go hey. the opposite of you. I mean, if that's the way it's going to I think Florida wins tonight. I do. I, I think Tampa got their win. Awesome. Good for them. I think Florida is ready to Florida at home tonight. Yeah, it'll be disappointing in this city if the Florida Panthers play the Boston Bruins and absolutely manhandle them and dummy them mm-hmm. because it will be more evidence of how far away it might have been. You know what I mean? Like if it, This was your time to beat the Boston Bruins. I have talked to people there, and they're like, I thought it was going to be different this year, man. Mm-hmm. And I said... Why are you telling me that? I'm not. I'm not with the team. I'm a broadcaster. And they're like, "Well, yeah." And I, if I they agree. get dummied by Florida, it'll be like, "So we lost to a team that just got their ass handed to them by another team." So where does that? Where are we at, actually? Yeah. Well, I mean, let it all play out. I. What happens so the the bet is null and void if one of those teams, like if you both split? Oh, right, you got to so, double yeah. down. You got to hit both. Okay. All right. Sure. Yeah. yeah I'll t- I'll take the opposite. Yeah, I mean, listen, Boston, what they have is they, they've got a really good system, a really good goalie. Um, they commit to it. But, yeah, you, you look at on paper, like JVR scored the other night. He's played well. Didn't play the first two games. Played really well in game three. Yeah. But you got him out there. You got rookie defensemen out there. You got Pat Maroon out there. You got, you know, up the middle of the ice. No one's going to the Hall of Fame. No, I know, but, but that's I, my counter to that is you got Ryan Reeves out there, you got Pontus Holmberg. That's, that's, like that's not what I'm saying, Noodles. I'm, I'm not. Obviously, they deserve to be up there. My point is right. that 
the Bruins, they're not like a juggernaut no, team. There's so more neither are the Leafs. Leafs. So I'm not no, saying Leafs. So I, now I know what you meant. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, in 2018 and 2019 and 2013, you're like, the Bruins are so much better than the Leafs. Like, yeah, so yeah. much better. Now, it's you don't look at this Bruin team and say, wow, that pops off the page. They are so deep and so good. No. Right. Yet they play really systematically yeah. strong hockey and they commit to their plan and they execute their plan and when in doubt they've got really good goalies and a good top four defense yeah and hence the position no, i know what you're saying now you're talking about like just popping off the page where a fourth line that, was, yeah that's all i'm saying you know, like, the least yeah, have like their a... own fires to put out too i'm not disputing right. that i'm just saying that in years past when it was leafs bruins you're like the leafs are really outmanned here you know like right, could they do right. it yeah but this Bruins team, it it's not the same yet. They're you know to their credit, they haven't missed a beat. Yeah. So no, it's, that's it's, where they're at. Well, we'll see if they have got a if what they got up their sleeve tomorrow. If they got yeah. a response here, you know yeah. that's really what it is. We'll see a lot of days off. That's another thing. Like one game in like six days, basically. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Um. So yeah, we'll see. We'll tee it up tomorrow. Yeah. All right, thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it, as always. Everyone for tuning in, TV, radio, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. We'll chat then.